Hello there everybody, I am the Gentle Bro and welcome back to Aviary Attorney. Sorry for the delay again, I'm very bad at this. Bloodborne's very addicting, you know? <clears throat> Anyways, uh, so we're in this trial. We've pretty much shown that the photograph was forged, or edited at least. And now I'm going to guess Baron Rorgrell is our prime suspect. And unfortunately, I think I've forgotten most of the voices. So excuse me if they sound different than last time or every episode, because that's probably going to happen. Anyways. <clears throat> but Baron, it's not a uh, time for your witness testimony yet. So you would think, Prosecutor, and yet I see my good reputation getting tarnished by your incompetence. I I incompetence? Indeed. Let us proceed with witness questioning. Is that fine with you, Judge? Yes, I suppose that's fine. Very good, and I trust that the defense has no objections. No, no objections here. Fantastic. Oh, but before I forget, I pledge to speak without fear and prejudice, etc., etc. Oh, Prosecutor, ask me about what I witnessed over the course of the evening. Uh, okay, Baron Rogel. Um, on the, uh... Night of the, uh... The initial dinner went magnificently. When the photographer arrived, Monsieur Grenwy left to visit the Guardian. I don't know if it's Grenwy or Grenway. I'm gonna say Grenwy. Like, wee! Anyways. Dame Caroline followed behind him moments later. Seigneur Pertois, Monsieur Robinio, and myself were engaged in conversation, so we paid her no mind. After the photographer, oh, I just keep saying photographer. It's photographer. After the photographer had left, my housemaid left to go find Monsieur Grenouille and Dame Caroline. That would be when I heard her cry for help. Uh, thank you, Baron. I think we all know the story from there. I would like to cross-examine the witness. Do you doubt my integrity, Garcon? I'm just here to uncover the truth, Baron. Very well then. Hit me with your best shot. Let us establish with absolute certainty that I, Baron Rogrell, am an honest man. The defense may proceed with the cross-examination. Okay. I didn't pick out anything... different. The dinner went magnificent. Well, they didn't have silverware. How could it go magnificently? And then that makes sense. I guess he'd head out there. I guess they went to the garden. And yeah, the the housemaid did find it, so I question the dinner, I guess. Baron Rogrell, I would like to ask you about the dinner you served that evening. Very well, ask away. Regarding the stolen cutlery. Earlier today, we established that silverware was stolen from your residence prior to the banquet. Indeed. I am aware of whom the culprit is, but I have decided not to press charges. It is curious, then, that you decided to serve steak. It isn't what one would describe as finger food, after all. I don't know about that, Falcon. With the right attitude, all food can be finger food. There's nothing curious about it. Seigneur Pertois and Dame Caroline are local lovers of rare steak. I was merely sweet... Oh, sweet... Oh my god, I... <laughs> I was merely suiting their needs. Besides what uh, other choice did the Baron have, Falcon? Serve vegetable broth like a... a common peasant? Do be quiet, Prosecutor. You sound ridiculous. S sorry, Baron. Uh, do I? Let's ask about the red herring, I guess. Now, about this red herring. Yes, what about it? I'm not sure, but I feel it's of vital importance to the case. Falcon, I just want to uh, clarify this. Are you saying that you wish to pursue the red herring? Oh boy. Uh. <laughs> oh boy. Um. I get the feeling this is one of those choices that are like. Might lose me some favor with the jury. I don't think I'm doing so hot with them. I'm, I might be like plus one. Uh, nah. No. On second thought, I suspect that the red herring may be a diversion. I'll leave it alone for now. That's a good call. The joke was starting to wear thin. I do not. Monster Gwenwi, Garden Housemaid. Uh.
Baron Grill, I... Um... Oh. Oh. <laughs> I thought it bugged out for a second. Uh... What's your relation? Who is your relation to Monzer Gwenwi? Prior to his demise, we were business partners. Monzer Gwenwi, Senor Pertois de Miao, and myself all allowed a third share in an up-and-coming railway company. Excuse the crassness of the question, but does that mean that you and Senor Pertois would now own half of the company each, correct? Correct. I suppose that's a slight glimmer of benefit that arose from this foul situation. But, Monsieur, you must understand that Monsieur Grenouille and I were friends as much as we were business associates. I mourn the man's passing. Of course. Uh... Why'd he visit the garden? Why did Monsieur Grenouille leave to visit the garden? I believe you wanted some fresh air. The steak did not sit well with him, I fear. Ah, I see. But that is quite coincidental timing, isn't it? How so? Well, Monsieur Grenouille felt sick and left the room just after the photographer arrived and just before the murder occurred. I might draw a link between the food and the sickness. Oh, hold on, Falcon. Sh surely you aren't suggesting that a Monsieur Gwenwee's food was poisoned in some way. Oh. I have a cigar. That's that's the thing. I don't have anything to prove that it was poisoned. No. No, no, there's nothing to indicate poisoning. I just found the timing somewhat puzzling. There's nothing puzzling about it. Monsieur Grenby always had a soft stomach. It's really no surprise that he couldn't keep down a good rare steak. Uh, I had the feeling... I mean, Sparrison didn't get to me about that, so I'm not sure. Garden. Baron, we saw the murder scene. Your garden for ourselves. Uh, when was the last time you visited it? And Regrill, when was the last time you ventured into your own garden? As it happens, I have quite serious allergies. I haven't been in my own garden for years. That's a lie! That's a lie, liar, lie. Years, you say? Indeed. That's not right. Baron, I did not wish to call you a liar, but that claim does not hold up to scrutiny. Oh, and why is that? Because we have hard evidence that you have visited the garden recently. Balderdash, my word is gold. Show the court this so-called hard evidence that I've been in my garden. I need a cigar, but... This was found in your garden. To be specific, it was found inside the fountain basin. Right beside where the murder occurred. A, a cigar butt? Uh, I don't... That, that could belong to uh, uh, anybody and... Prosecutor, please shut your mouth. I can speak for myself. Uh, okay, sorry, Baron. That is indeed the remnants of one of my cigars, but I must apologize, Monsieur Falcon, for I misunderstood your initial question. You see, prior to the banquet, I hadn't visited my own garden in years. But naturally, after hearing the housemaids cry for help on the evening of the murder, I rushed outside. I was shocked and disgusted by what I saw. That must have been when I dropped my half-smoked cigar in the fountain basin. I feel like I'm slurring in this accent now that I've been doing it for long, because he hasn't had a whole lot of talking until now. You see, Falcon, there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. I would find that believable if the cigar were casually discarded. But as it happened, the cigar butt was found in the fountain's upper basin, a location that only could be accessed with great inconvenience. And a little paddling. The cigar butt was not dropped, it was deliberately hidden. There are any number of possible explanations. Are there? Because I can only think of one. That is, that you, Baron Rogrell, deliberately hid your cigar butt to disguise your own illicit activities. Did I now? And what illicit activities would those be? You want me to spell it out? Fine. Let's put everything on the table. You, Baron Rogrel, murdered Monsieur Grenouille. That is what you were trying to keep hidden. If I didn't lower the music volume, this would probably sound really cool, but I lowered it because it was really loud. Directly accusing me of murder? How shamelessly brazen. That is a ludicrous accusation, Falcon. The Baron is an upstanding citizen of the highest order. Your allegation is baseless! You have no evidence, no, uh, means, motive, or opportunity! No evidence? Think harder, Monsieur Rabington. Every piece of evidence points to Baron Rogrel as the prime suspect. You want the means? The Baron certainly has the means. His lion claws are as sharp as a surgeon's blade. Getting a frog belly will be trivial to him. Even Monsieur Rubinio confessed just moments ago that he feared his claws. <coughs> Ridiculous! I would never threaten a man with violence! You want a motive? The Baron had at least 10,000 francs worth of motive. 
By removing a business partner, the Baron's share of his railway company increased from one-third to one-half. This is preposterous. And finally, the Baron had an opportunity. No, he crafted the perfect opportunity. He arranged a small banquet with, every, with a very select number of guests. He was aware of the missing silverware, and yet he served steak, a food item that necessitates good cutlery. Why? To bloody the hands of his guests, of course. Then he hired an easily influenced photographer and staged a very specific picture in order to build a perfect alibi for himself. F photographing the guests in front of a handless clock to make for easy editing is quite an ingenious plan, it must be said. Prosecutor, are you just going to let this slanderous yarn go uncontested? Say something! Object! I- I, um... Oh, you're pitifully useless. After executing the murder, the Baron found himself still holding a single piece of incriminatory evidence, his finished cigar. He knew that leaving it at the crime scene would raise suspicion, but he didn't have time to properly dispose of it. Could, can you just have, like, stuck it in your pocket and just threw it away somewhere else? Like, I mean, just snuff it out, like, like just on the inside of your shirt, maybe? You just don't burn yourself, I uh, whatever. So, out of desperation, he threw it into his fountain, out of the sight of his guests and any snooping police. I imagine the Baron was hoping to implicate Seigneur Pertoir de Miao, since that would ensure total control over his railway company. The last name Caterline was the first to happen upon the crime scene, so the Baron improvised. This is an outrage. Judge, I demand that you disbar this ranting lunatic. No, there is only one outrage here. That is, that a man like yourself is able to abuse his wealth and status to frame an innocent girl for murder. You're a burgeois of the worst kind. How dare you, Gosson! The other nerve for a lying scumbag of a lawyer to accuse a philanthropist like myself of something so heinous, heinous, heinous. Yeah, that's the word. I'm nothing like the fat cat Burgeois. I'm a respectable, hard-working capitalist. No, you're a ruthless man who would slaughter a dear friend just to reap a few francs. You incredulous whelp! I'll to get you right here and now, like, like, like a damned frog. Well, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Could... Could someone please restrain the Baron? I'm on it, Your Honor. I, he's a quark. I guess he's a bailiff. So, I'm gonna give him that accent. I'm on it, Your Honor. Let's go, old man. To the concierge with... Conciergerie. I, conciergerie. Conciergerie with you. Don't touch me, you filthy jackdaw. I can walk myself. This is quite a turn of events. Does the prosecution have anything to add? I, uh... Well, in a manner of, uh, speaking, uh... Well, to be honest, uh... No. Then I shall now confer with the members of the jury to come to a decision. I ask that the animals of the court please be patient in this time. The falcon, that was pretty incredible. Thank you. I just hope it was enough. What do you mean? You just proved Caroline's innocence. We'll get a not guilty verdict for sure. Hmm. Sparrison, I think you've misunderstood something important about the justice system. What's that? I haven't proved anything. As lawyers, we cannot deal in proofs. It's just not possible. All we can do is organize the evidence and convincingly explain what it suggests. I haven't proved Dame Caroline's innocence. All I've done is demonstrate that there's a significant possibility that she is not guilty. I'm not sure I understand the difference. We have reached a decision. In light of the recent revelations, it is clear that an error of judgment was made with the initial arrest. On that note, we unanimously, unanimously find the defendant, Dame Caterline de Miao, to be not guilty. Yay! That, that's... yay! If it, like, came in one letter at a time, I'd have been like, come on, come on. Uh, what was your voice? Uh, Monsieur Falcon, Petite Sparrowson, you did it! Yeah, I suppose we did, didn't we? We should head back to the office so we can celebrate properly. Yay, I did it. I won. I'm clapping my fingers. That's not what you think it is. You did it, Falcon. I can't take all the credit. This is a group achievement. I'm so proud of you both. I'll go get one bottle of wine and three of our least dirty glasses. You are amazing, Monsieur Falcon. Ah, uh, it was nothing. I very much like the way you pinned the murder on the Baron. That was an act of sheer genius. Well, I didn't pin anything. Sparrowson and I just worked at unveiling the truth, given the facts of the case. Monsieur Falcon, there's no need to play coy. The case is over. 
like coy. Don't tell me you're actually being sincere. I'm completely lost. Oh, wow. I thought the goody-goody thing was an act, but you actually don't know. All right, I'll spell it out for you. Did you Mordor? God damn it. God damn it. I saw him in the garden all drunk and vulnerable and I see the opportunity. It was nothing personal, just business, you understand? Oh. Uh, you bitch. I knew at some point in this game I'd be defending an innocent client. Defending a guilty client, but... The fucking first case. <clears throat> okay. Business. To increase my papa's share in the train company, of course. My papa always said that the drunk old frog was the weakest link. Your confession doesn't make any sense at all. I found Baron Grill's cigar butt hidden in the garden. Oh, I put that there. I expected the police to find it, but I suppose that was putting too much faith in the brains of Paris's finest. But Falcon proved that Monsieur Robinho's photograph was edited. It was edited. I wasn't in the picture because I was busy paying a visit to Monsieur Grenouille in the garden. Ugh! My papa knew I needed an alibi, so he ordered Monsieur Robinho to paint me over Baron Roguel and to add hands to the clock. But that lazy artist didn't manage to finish altering either photograph by trial day. It's a good thing that Monsieur Falcon was so imaginative because that could have gone very badly. Ah, uh, uh. What's with the silence? You both should be proud. There aren't many lawyers in the whole of France who would have won a case like this, even for a Burgoyne kitty like me. I think you should leave. Hmm, fine. So much for the celebrations. Here's the payment for your services, straight from my papa's pockets. Well, adieu, Monsieur Falcon. Adieu, Petit Sparrison. Falcon, what do we do now? Falcon? I'm not happy about that. But, I'm gonna continue on, like this. Not gonna bitch out. Gonna. Gonna keep it rolling. You know? I'm very disappointed. I mean, mostly I'm disappointed at the makers of the game. You make the tutorial case. One you feel shitty about. <sighs> the chair just shifted. Well. <laughs> Anyways. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And I hope you enjoy watching the next one as well. But until then. Fairly well.